I was uh, introduced to tennis probably about six or seven years old. Um, tennis is a sport that kind of went through my family. Uh, believe it or not, my mom was actually the first one to start. My dad picked it up after that, and uh, you know, as we got older, we would often go watch my dad play in his uh, his company tennis tournaments. And then I think after a while, my mom was like, you know, we always come out and watch you play your your tennis tournaments. The kids are now old enough. Um, you know, why don't you introduce the kids to uh, to something you really really enjoy? And that was really how we how we got started. Um, you know, in the sport of tennis, obviously we played a lot of other sports. I played a lot of soccer growing up, I did a lot of fishing, played a little bit of basketball in junior high, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> um, but tennis was something that I always really, really enjoyed the most. I don't know whether it's because uh, it was an individual sport or there was always challenges to, uh, to look forward to and challenges to, uh, to try to attain, but it's always been um, you know, a sport that uh, you know, I've always enjoyed. Uh, in so many aspects, um, obviously throughout my junior career, professional career, and uh, post-career even now, you know, introducing the sport to, uh, to my kids. You know, I actually really didn't start thinking about playing professionally. Um, I mean, I think it was always a dream of mine. Um, I remember doing like a, you know, kind of a show and tell back in fourth grade, and I brought all these different props and what it would entail to be a professional tennis player, you know, the dream of going out and playing, you know, all those Grand Slam tournaments and stuff. I don't think it really, really, uh, became a possibility of in my mind until I was about 15 years old um, and that was really because I had won the national 18 title in Kalamazoo which if you win that tournament you actually get a wild card in the US Open from there that summer I really kinda got a taste of what it's like to to play in some professional tournaments and strangely enough I I played a series of four professional tournaments um, during a six-week span uh, I lost in the first round and won um, second round of the U.S. Open, I got to the semifinals of another one and I won one. So within a short period of time, within a six-week period of time, I went from having no ranking at all to ranking of 163 in the world, um, just as a 15-year-old. So from there, we really started to think to ourselves, you know, well, is this is this really a possibility in in um, you know in making this a career, especially at such a young age? Yeah, I have a lot of um, youngest ever records. You know, I, certainly in the professional tennis world. I was the youngest to, uh, to win a professional match uh, at the U.S. Open um, when I was 15 years old. I was the youngest to, uh, to rank in the top five. I'm still the youngest male uh, ever to win a Grand Slam tournament. I don't know, it's, it's kind of come with the territory a little bit um, because I would often play, play up in age division as a, as a junior. It's been such a great experience to play you know, at such a young age. Uh, obviously, I, you know, I turned pro a little before my 16th birthday. Um, you know, most kids are kind of getting their bearings, um, you know, in high school. But for me, I, you know, I started my career early. I certainly have no regrets in, in the decision that I made. You know, I just think to myself, you know, what other teenager has the opportunity to travel around the world doing something they, they enjoy, um, you know, at the highest level. I think I missed out in certain aspects growing up, but, uh, you know, certainly the opportunities to play against, uh, you know, the world's best on the most grandest stages, um, you know, around the world was uh, was really, really special. Well, I mean, the French Open 89 was really an incredible tournament. A lot of interesting things, um, you know, happening around uh, that particular time. June of, uh, June of 1989 was actually a very sad time um, for Chinese people around the world because the, uh, the situation in Tiananmen was happening. Uh, the crackdown in Beijing actually happened the middle Sunday of, uh, of the French Open. Um, and it was interesting because, uh, you know, certainly if I was not um, out practicing or out playing my matches in Paris, um, you know, my mom and I were glued to the television set watching the events unfold over there in Beijing. You know, and I'd often wondered what my purpose was and, and what God's purpose was in allowing me to, to win that tournament. Um, and, you know, without question, there's, there was no real reason for me to, to get through the matches that I did and the circumstances that, that happened. You know, especially my match with, with Lendl, um, especially my match with, uh, with Stefan Edberg in, in, uh, in the finals. Um, I mean, even the quarters and, and semis uh, against Aginor and Chesnikov, I, I was you know, struggling in a lot of different aspects. And, you know, it's, it's amazing still even for me to think about it after so many years and, and how, um, you know, I feel like God's hand was really upon it to allow me to win. And, um, and in looking back, I've always told people that, you know, I've always felt that the French Open in 89 wasn't about Michael Chang becoming the youngest, you know, male Grand Slam champion, um, but it was really about you know, putting a smile upon Chinese people's faces during a time when there wasn't a whole lot to smile about. And that's why I really feel like God brought me through 
um, those circumstances and those matches um, you know, when I really had no business uh, uh, you know, getting through them. I'm Michael Chang and I play for him.